What's going on YouTube? Three Bear Minimum. Today guys, I want to tell you all of the processes and important information you're going to need to swap out a Kawasaki T-Rex engine uh, with a brute force engine. Um, I did this on a 2008 Kawasaki T-Rex. I put in a 2009 brute force engine and there's a lot of things you need to know and you're not going to find this information readily available. Uh, unless you try doing it. You might find some videos to tell you how to do it. A few of the videos out there had some misinformation in them or they forgot some information and I want to lay it all out. There are no videos in here to show you the process. If you're doing this, I'm pretty sure you're going to know what you're doing when you get into these things. So if you don't, take it to a shop, bring it to me, pay me. Uh, but these are the things you're definitely going to need to know. The first thing you need to know, take pictures of everything. Take pictures of all your electrical hookups. Take pictures of all your vacuum lines on your T-Rex because when you put the brute force engine in, some of those vacuum lines won't have a hookup for them. It's there. It's hidden. I'll tell you about that at the end. The next thing you're going to need to know, once you get that engine out of there and you got your donor brute force engine and you want to get ready and put it in, stop. It's not that simple. You have to replace the output shafts. So hopefully the output shaft in your T-Rex is not destroyed, which most likely your engine locked up because it got an oil leak and you didn't realize it because of the skid plate and you didn't check your oil levels and your connecting rod went through your block. Sound about right? Probably. That's why you're doing this job. So when you put this new engine in, you got to stop. Put them both up on a bench, go to your, your bloat engine, and pull your output shaft. It's going to be like four bolts in the backside. The whole shaft comes out as one unit. The brute force output shaft has a different splining and it's also a different length that comes out of the engine. Uh, so when you go to put your T-Rex, you're going to have this in there. Why won't it match up? Well, now you got to pull the engine out again. Stop. Do this right the first time. Don't do it four times like I had to. The second thing you need to know is if you get a brute force engine, you're going to need to use your Kawasaki T-Rex uh, cover and you're also going to need to use a set of the brute force clutches. Uh, why? Because the cover is slightly larger on the brute force and it's going to rub when it gets in there. And if you use the, the T-Rex clutches on the brute force engine and try putting the T-Rex cover on, the clutches are going to hit and you're not going to be able to get it on. So you get a set of brute force clutches. They're slightly sh shallower. Um, and when you do do this, make sure you get, get the uh, the spring upgrade on your primary clutch. That will do you, that will do you a world of good, giving you better torque when you're riding a saying later. But swap out your brute force clutches onto the brute force engine and use your T-Rex cover. That's one of the things you're going to do. Also, when you swap out your output shaft, it's very important you also swap the bevel gear. The bevel gear on the Brute Force has, I think it's 10 splines, um, and the one on the T-Rex has 11. Uh, but anyway, you need it's a matched pair. So on your T-Rex engine, pull out the bevel gear and pull out the output shaft. Put those into your Brute Force. And also, most of your, of your uh, brute force engines are EFI. Your T-Rex is carbureted. So it's a completely different firing that's going to go on here. So you're going to need to pull out your stator and pickup coil. On the T-Rex, it's going to have like two magnets on the stator. On the brute force, it has 12. So you're going to need to replace the, the pickup coil and the stator, or your stator, or your rotor, or whatever you want to call it. Got to swap them out. Otherwise, what's going to happen is you put the thing back together, it's going to backfire. When it backfires, it shears off teeth of your starter gear. That's the other thing. If this thing has ever backfired to brute force, uh, make sure you do pull that cover anyway and inspect the teeth on the starter gear. If even one are missing, which is a very common problem with those engines, when you start it, you go... <laughs> You're going to have this clicking sound. You're starting it, and slowly they're going to shear off more and more and more. And if one of these teeth happens to get into the timing chains of the engine, that also could be what happens to you to blow your engine up. It's going to be another problem going down the road. So make sure you check the, te the teeth 
on your starter gear. Uh, and that's not very hard to pull out. Once you have off your, your stator, it's very easy. Just go ahead and pull that gear right off and replace it. You can find them online for like $35. Just swap it out. If you can get the upgrade, if you can, you can get the 2012 uh, T-Rex gear will work in there as well. And it's about a millimeter wider. And it just fits right in there. Perfectly smooth. That's what I did. Upgrade it. And when you put everything back together, you're going to notice that two vacuum lines don't hook up. Again, because now you're dealing with a carbureted system when an engine that used to be EFI. So on the side of your brute force cylinders, the very top, you're going to notice there's a little black cap. Pull that black cap off, hook your vacuum line up, do that on both sides of the engine, and that should take care of 99.9% .9 of your problems. The other problem is going to be busting your ass to get the thing in and out of there. I highly recommend dropping off the... Uh, the pan underneath to get it out. The You're going to need to drop off your muffler. Um, that'll make yourself world a whole lot easier. And you're also going to probably want to take out your seat belts as well. Uh, at least the, the one holder um, on the inside of the engine. Make it a lot easier. Buy yourself a bag and a little those push nuts to hook everything back together. You can get 100 of them for like 12 bucks off the Amazons. And that will pretty much wrap up the job. But the biggest things you got to remember... Output shaft, bevel gear, clutches, stator and pickup coil, and your vacuum line caps. Once you have all that, fire it up. Head on down the road. Leave me a comment below if you have any questions. If you got any comments, concerns, if you think I, met, I left anything out, let me know. But I did this job several times on one vehicle. And, uh, yeah, I figured I'd put this video out to tell you guys. This is all the information. Three bare minimum, I'm out.